I will continue today with the second installment in that series. Whistle while you wait. Amen. If you have your Bibles, I'd like for you to open them to the book of Habakkuk. 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 Amen. Praise God. We'll read Habakkuk chapter 2. We'll read Psalm 42 and uh, Romans 8.28. You know what? Write the scriptures down. Habakkuk chapter 2 verses 1 to 4. Habakkuk 2, 1 to 4. Then 3, 17 to 19. Habakkuk 3, 17 to 19. 2, 1 to 4. 3, 17 to 19. Psalm 42 verse 5. And Romans 8, 28. Romans 8, 28. Romans 8, 28. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the entrance of your word. The Bible says it gives light and it gives understanding. Holy Spirit, I turn this assembly loose to you right now. That you will honor Jesus Christ. That you will express and fulfill the will of the Father in this place. And as the word of God goes forth, it will, you will lead in it with power to heal, to transform, to comfort, to encourage, and to take people from where they are to where they need to be in destiny. Lord, I ask that you anoint me, that you will cause me to speak as your oracles. Lord, may your kingdom come, may your will be done. Like we pray tonight, let your word grow mightily until it prevails. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Habakkuk. Chapter 2, verses 1 to 4. I will stand my watch and set myself on the rampart and watch to see what he, God, will say to me and what I will answer when I am corrected. Then the Lord answered and said, Write the vision and make it plain on tablets that he may run who reads it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time. Let's say that together. For the vision is yet for an appointed time. But at the end it will speak. Somebody say it will speak. And it will not lie. Though it tarries, wait for it. Look at your neighbor say, wait for it. If God says wait, it means that it will happen. Amen? Wait for it. Because it will surely come. It will not tarry. Somebody say, surely. Chapter 3, verse 17. Though the fig tree may not blossom, nor fruit be on the vines, though the labor of the olive may fail, and the fields yield no fruit, food though the flock may be cut off from the fold and there be no herd in the stalls yet i will rejoice in the lord i will joy in the god of my salvation the lord god is my strength he will make my feet like deer's feet and he will make me walk on my high heels to the chief musician with my stringed instrument i believe the guy was playing music amen to the chief musician with my stringed instrument psalm 42 psalm 42 and verse 5 look into your bible or your neighbor's bible if you don't have Psalm 42 verse 5. Why are you cast down, O my soul? And why are you disquieted within me? Hope in God, for I shall yet praise him for the help of his countenance. Why are you cast down, O my soul? And why are you disquieted within me? Why are you disquieted within me? And I'll quickly read Romans 8.28, a very popular uh, verse of the scripture. Uh, it says that, and we know. Somebody say we know. And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are the called according to his purpose. All things work together for good. Hallelujah. Today I'll be talking about how to whistle while you wait. How to whistle. We're talking about whistle while you wait. So I've covered what I'll be talking about tonight. How to whistle while you wait. <laughs> Amen. You know it's not everybody that can do that. <laughs> Praise God. Now, last week we saw that waiting is a part of life. Do you remember that? That waiting is a part of life that we are all waiting for something. You are in between something that you have prayed for and the manifestation of that thing. And that uh, we said that God usually will have three answers to our requests, our desires. One of them is what? 
Huh? The second one is what? No. The third one is what? So yes, wait. Sorry, yes, no, or wait. And uh, when it is time to wait, that's when we have problem. Uh, we saw some reasons why God uh, will make us wait uh, because he expects certain conditions to be met. Uh, the Bible says that uh, makes us to understand that where those conditions are met, he who is to come will come and he will not tarry. We saw that I said when your obedience is complete, he will punish every disobedience. God is not a wicked God. We also said last week that life is not just about the destination. It is a journey. Life is a journey. And the story of any travel is in the journey. You want to talk about your journey? You want to talk about, uh, you want to talk about a place you went to for holiday in those days in school? You want to talk about the journey, how you parked on the road, how you had a flat tire, how you saw somebody who had a live bush, uh, bush meat on the road and, and grass cutter and all of that, how you stopped in a particular place, how Junior was always saying he wanted to use the toilet, he wanted to use the toilet. And the journey, the, the story uh, of, the, of the trip, of the travel, is in the journey. That's where the testimony is. And we concluded last week by, by, by advising ourselves that we must learn to enjoy where we are on our way to where we are going to. We must learn to enjoy where we are on our way to where you are going to. Don't live miserable expecting a better tomorrow. When I make my first million, I'll be happy. When I get married, I'll be happy. When I get a job that gives me 600,000 naira a month, I will be happy. No, enjoy where you are on your way to where you are going to. And you remember we spoke about Elimelech, that we should be careful that we don't make our permanent decisions based on temporary setbacks as something that we will regret. He was hasty, made a decision, and then everything went back, went bad for him. Amen? Praise the name of the Lord. So that gives us a brief summary of what we did last week. Now, waiting can be mentally torturing, can be mentally torturing, can be discouraging, and it can be overwhelming. Uh, waiting is a call to faith. Because you are not in control of the variables. When you are told to wait, uh, it's a call to faith. You have to walk by faith. Because you are not in control of the variables. uh, The variables that determine the outcome of your expectation. And you are not in control of the timing or or the the timing of the appearance of the things that you are praying for. Because you can't tell if it will come now or in the next hour. And so waiting is a call to faith. And so you have to depend on God and wait on him to act now i must say to you that the main aim of the devil and i said that last week during your time of waiting is to dampen your spirit and to eliminate faith and make you distrust god and give up the objective of the devil when you are waiting on god is to dampen your faith uh, to make you get to a point where you are agitated uh, you give up on god because you have started to distrust him uh, we can see this in the story of job uh, you can feel his despair in all of that, in all those periods that he had to wait, for, uh, wait on God. And you could see all the attacks of the devil. He says, skin for skin, will a man serve God for nothing? He said, take away everything he has. And this guy was waiting. He said, I will wait till my change comes. The first trial of his wait was his wife. Was his wife. He said to him, curse God and die. They said, does Job still hold on to his righteousness? And all his friends came and and made that experience a torturous experience for him. Because that's the the, the strategy of the devil. Wanting to curse God and die. And that's why God said to uh, to Habakkuk in the place we read. He said that the, the just shall live by faith. The just shall live by faith. He had told him about uh, waiting for something. He says, wait for the miracle. Wait for what you are trusting God for. Wait because the vision is for an appointed time. He said, it will surely come to pass. It may delay, but it will come to pass. And like I gave him my example last week, I said anything I almost killed myself to have. But in time, they eventually came. And so he said, it will come to pass. And then God says that if any man draws back, my soul will not have pleasure in him. He says, the, behold the proud in spirit. His soul is not upright within him. It says, but the just shall live by faith. And so, waiting period calls for you to walk by faith. It is a time that you exercise faith in God and in what he has promised. Amen. It is by faith that you shall see your expectations. Now, discouragement when you are waiting mostly comes from uh, people's comments about you. People's comments about you. Uh, we started this thing together. Oh, look at him. He's been going to church for all these years. This same thing he has been bringing before God. And like you saw with Job's friend, people's comments can get you discouraged. 
Uh, at some, some other times, it is seen that others are getting their miracles and, meet and, and moving on. Others are getting their miracles and moving on. That can get you discouraged. Uh, another thing that can get you discouraged is you look at your life. You are so committed to God. You are doing all of this, serving God. And things are still not happening. Things are spiraling downwards. And uh, I want you to know that life has shown that discouragement comes mostly when you are closest to your miracle. Discouragement comes mostly when you are closest to your miracle. And so when you feel like you are about to throw in the towel, maybe just around the corner, something is about to happen. God is about to turn certain things around. So we must keep our spirits ready to receive our desire without losing enthusiasm. Now that's the real test. To keep your spirits alive. To keep your spirit awake. Expecting to receive something. You know, we look at that man at the pool of Bethesda for 38 years. Uh, you know, we, we said several you know, things negative about him. But for me, when I look at that man sometimes... For 38 years, you should have gone home, you should have given up. But this guy remained in the place of believing, in the place of expectation for 38 years. And so how long are you willing to wait on God? So we must keep our spirits ready to receive without losing enthusiasm. God warned Habakkuk of the need to wait. He warned him of the need to wait. So he said, you know what? If you don't stay in faith, you will break your spirit. You'll be broken in spirit and then pride will come in pride will come in. You begin to consider alternatives. And I believe it was when he got that from God, we saw in the later part in chapter 3 where we read that even though the fig tree was not blossoming and things were not going the way he wanted, he said, I will rejoice in the God of my salvation. And so basically when he saw that, when God told him, he said, I will wait to see what God will say. And God said, write the vision down. And like I said earlier, you are writing it down because God says it will come to pass. God himself says, write it down. I will bring it to pass. He said, even though it tarries, in other words, certain things delay in life. He says, but I am committed to you. It will surely come to pass. And I, when the man heard that, I believe that when things were not working out around him, he said, I will rejoice in the God of my salvation. The guy began to sing. Basically, he began to whistle. He began to make melody to the Lord in his spirit. And I'll talk about that some. What does it mean to whistle? Just dictionary definition. We all know what it is, but the dictionary definition. It is to produce a tune by emitting a clear, high-pitched sound by forcing breath through the holes in either your through a hole, uh, either between your lips or between your teeth. Uh, whistling can be a form of singing. Can be a form of singing. Uh, sometimes it is a tune that warps off from your subconscious. You know, sometimes you are doing something. And without thinking about it, you just begin to go. You're not thinking about it. So sometimes it is a melody that wafts up from your subconscious. And mostly the whistler is in another world. Most of the time when you are whistling, you forget about your cares. You are in another world. You are just doing that thing, not thinking about it. And you are whistling. When it is well done, when whistling is well done, it breathes an air of power and strength just be breathe an air of power you just look at the person and say this guy doesn't have any problem in this life he's just whistling his life or himself away now why whistle whistling is good for your psyche for your psyche because the biggest part of every battle the biggest part of every battle the biggest part of every setback every crisis every delayed answer every waiting is the psychological warfare like I told you at the, at the all night, that the devil's greatest strategy is to mess up your mind. Mess up your mind to a point where you don't believe in God again. Mess up your mind to a point where you don't think it's going to happen again. Mess up your mind to, when you hear about the situation, you say, well, this is how we started with that person and they failed. Uh, I can see the same pattern. And it's all in your mind. And so whistling is good for your psyche. Just helps you to uh, gain a... Uh, a healthy uh, sense of, uh, of believing, of hope, of confidence uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, it says that the battle uh, shall not conquer you, uh, but that you will go in strength and walk in victory. It says that the battle uh, should, should not steal your peace when you are whistling. You are basically saying that, you know what? Uh, my peace is not dependent on the things happening around me. I have peace from the inside. I have peace from the inside. I have hope and confidence from the inside. By whistling... You make it appear that you don't have any problem in the world. It says to the opposition that their strategy 
isn't working. It keeps your spirit hopeful. It communicates thankfulness to God. So by whistling, you are saying to the opposition, your strategy is not working. You thought by now I should be crying. By now I should be pulling my hair. By now I should change my confession and be saying, woe is me. He says, no, but I'll make, a melo- I'll make melody unto the Lord. So it confuses the adversary. It doesn't let them get what they expect from you. If you ever watch this movie, uh, The King and I, I don't know if anybody has seen it before, uh, a long time ago, an old movie, uh, there was that, that, that lady that came from England to go and teach in Burma and uh, saw this hefty looking man and the little priest, a little son rather, was afraid. And uh, she said, she said, Mommy, I'm afraid. He said, no, when you're afraid, this is what you do. I whistle a happy tune. I whistle a happy tune. And no one will suspect I'm afraid. <laughs> if you remember. He says, by doing that. So these people are threatening all around. He said, but when you're passing by, then just be the... Why? Because they just go like, what is this person banking on? Where, where is his confidence coming from? Why? So it, it discomfits, it disorganizes, it disorients the enemy. So you must learn to whistle. And I'll tell you a little more about that. Amen? I whistle a happy tune. Now, I'm not just talking about literal whistling. It's not just literal whistling. It will include that, but it is much more than that. By whistling... I mean that anything that you can do that can keep you in high spirits, anything that will lift your spirit, that will, that will make you excited, anything that will keep your focus off of the weight, off of the things you are waiting for, that will keep your expectations on God, anything that will keep you excited, that will keep you happy, that's what I mean by whistling. It will include singing, it will include rejoicing. Are testifying, helping others. It will mean resting in God, expressing confidence in God, fully assured of the outcome. It will mean maintaining a positive attitude. Maintaining a positive attitude through the period of wait. And I said to you, don't let life steal your joy. Don't let life steal your song. And so when I say whistle, I'm saying, just do whatever will make you a happy person. Whatever will keep your spirit high. Whatever will keep your faith alive. Are the things that you should be doing while you are waiting and i know that singing is one of them praising god is one of them magnifying the name of the lord is one of them thanking god is one of them amen now by whistling this is the message you send across anytime you begin to whistle i'll tell you about eight or nine of them this is what you pass across anytime you begin to whistle or keep your spirit high or do things that make your spirit uh be excited in the lord number one joy It tells God that your joy is not in the things happening around you. Your joy is not tied to any circumstance. Your joy is not tied to what you are waiting for. Not that when I get this, then I will be happy. My joy is in the Lord. My joy is in the Lord. Habakkuk said, I will rejoice in the Lord. I will rejoice in the Lord. So it communicates joy. You rarely ever hear sad people whistling. I've never seen one sad person that is whistling. Whistling expresses joy. The Bible says in Isaiah 12 verse 3, it says, With joy you will draw waters from the wells of salvation. So number one, it communicates joy. Number two, you are saying when you whistle that you have an inner source of strength and satisfaction. An inner source of strength and satisfaction. The Bible says we are complete in him, not when we have the car. Not when we have the house. Not when the job comes. We are complete in him. So an inner sense of satisfaction. Even though he slays me, I will still trust him. An inner sense of satisfaction is what you project and communicate when you whistle. And number four, number three, sorry, you project courage. 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 Like I said about that little boy. You just just make it look as if everything is fine. Nothing to be afraid of. I'm not intimidated by anything. I know courage is important in winning the battles of life. Courage. Just going around as if, you know, you have it all covered. It's so important in uh, in Joshua chapter 1. In about three verses, four times, God kept telling Joshua, be courageous, be courageous, be courageous, be courageous. Why? Because psychological warfare is to take away your courage. And so, whistling communicates courage. It just says, you know, I'm strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Number four, whistling, especially a song, can cause your body, and science say this, says this will cause your body to produce or your brain to secrete feel good chemicals, feel good hormones, endorphins to just go through your body uh, and help you to manage uh, whatever you're going through right now, reduces the pains that you feel about your situation 
at that time. It's like eating chocolate. You know, when you, no matter what you are going through, if you eat chocolate, you just feel very good. The only thing with whistling on like chocolate is that it won't add calories. You won't get fatter on it. Amen. Just makes you happy in the Lord. Amen. So it, it releases feel good hormones in your body. Uh, number five, it confuses and rattles the enemy. And that enemy is the devil. He says you are not thinking much of him. You are not giving the devil attention. That is not all that. You are basically right-sizing the enemy and downsizing the enemy. You are right-sizing the problem by not crying and, and sitting down and complaining, but whistling, singing, expressing joy. You are telling the enemy you are not all that. You are not all that. It confuses him. You remember when David went to Goliath and he was going to fight this man mountain or a mountain of a man. Uh, the guy well kitted and all of that. And uh, he, he would have thought that whoever was coming to fight him must have uh, some javelins and bazookas and all of those things. And so this guy comes and his weapons were not carnal. They were mighty in God. Just came with stones and a sling. And Goliath said, am I a dog? Why? Because that's why I had reduced him to. He said, am I a dog that you come against me with stones and sticks? So it downsizes and it right-sizes the problem. When you begin to sing in the face of a trouble, of a, of a problem, it downsizes it and right-sizes it. Number six, it makes the problem lighter or smaller than it looks. Number seven, it expresses super faith in God. It expresses super faith in God. It expresses super faith, super faith that you can sing through crisis. A songwriter says, faith will sing through days of sorrow. It expresses super faith in God. That you are singing, that you are rejoicing, that you are celebrating. Some people say it communicates seriousness on, on seriousness. No, <laughs> it actually communicates faith. It takes faith to sing when things are not going on well. It takes faith to sing, to rejoice, to bless the name of the Lord. So it communicates faith, uh, a super faith to God. You know, Jesus Christ, when he was teaching about uh, this concept, spoke about the birds. He said, look at the birds of the air. He says, they neither toil nor sow nor gather into bands. And like I said before, even from that scripture, he says, birds don't have savings account. They don't have any form of investment. They don't have any place they are farmed that they are going to go and reap. But then, birds wake up in the morning and what do they do? Every morning. Every morning, nothing kept. Somebody says, not that birds have the answer. Birds just have a song. So they may not have the answer, but that, that song, they will always sing it. And Jesus Christ, when he was telling us to live a carefree life, to not let the things we are waiting for weigh us down, he, compared, he, he, he drew an analogy with the birds or from the birds. He says, look at the birds of the air. And I said to us that when you look at those birds, he wakes up in the morning, he has children, he has a wife, he has a nest to take care of, uh, and, and then he doesn't have anything saved, but he wakes up and he sings, Father, I bless you. Oh, Lord, I declare that you're a good God. You are the light of my life. I worship you, God. Faithful God. Oh, faithful God, I worship you. I bless you. And you know what happens? Somebody goes to a restaurant, buys rice, eats it, doesn't finish it. Mama put in trying to wash the plate, throws the rice outside so that she can wash the plate. And by doing that, it's providing for the birds. And so the bird goes, and God is making different people do different things in different places so that the birds will be taken care of. If at the day God taught me this, we had just cut the grasses in front of our house and we hadn't packed them, they, had, they were drying up. And I saw a bird coming to pick the, the dried uh, grasses. And I looked and by the Nepal thing there, he was building a nest there. And God said to me, you know what? I made you cut the grasses in front of your house because of that bird. So, so God says that kind of life is what happens when you begin to whistle. That's what the birds do. Just sing. I don't care how big it is. Just sing. I don't care how weighty it looks. Just rejoice in the Lord. Because you know what Jesus Christ said. How many of you by worrying can add a cubit to your stature? Worry has never promoted anybody. It has never changed any situation. And like we said, God doesn't respond to tears. Neither does he respond to worry. He only responds to faith. And lastly, when you whistle, it gives you the strength to face another day. It gives you the strength to face another day. Why? Because you are expressing, you are releasing joy. The, uh, the, the Habakkuk said in the place we read, he said, I will rejoice in the God of my salvation. And then he goes for that, he said, he will make my feet, feet like the hind zone and I will walk upon my high places. So he got strengthened 
by the fact that he was giving praise to God. So by saying whistle while you wait, I'm saying don't let the wait break you or get you discouraged. I'm saying don't give the devil what he wants. I'm saying don't let him see your tears. Don't let the devil see your tears. Don't get into the complaining and grumbling mode. Do the opposite of what the devil wants. Do the opposite of what your flesh wants. Do everything that communicates your confidence in God and in the outcome of your weight. Understand that all things are working together for your good. Understand that. Understand that. Romans 8.28 where we read. It said, and we know. And I believe they said that because they have known by experience. They've known by looking at the saints in the Bible. The Bible says, you have seen the perseverance of Job and the end intended by the Lord. It says, and we know that all things will work together for the good of them that love the Lord and are the called according to his purpose. So don't lose sight of that. Know that God is working all things together uh, for your good. Whistling while you wait may not be easy. I will, I will, I will be kidding if I say it's easy. But it is the way to go. It's the biblical way to go. It lifts your spirit. It makes the weight less tedious. It makes the weight less tedious. You're not thinking about what you don't have. You're thinking about the goodness of God. It pleases God because it is an expression of faith. It also encourages people around you. Especially if you are a leader, if you are the head of a house. Imagine if a father just sits in the house every day and there's no money in the house and he's just, his head is just down like this. He say, honey, what is it? Ah, things are really, really bad. The children come and say, daddy, what is it? Things are really, really bad. You are also teaching the children how to handle tough times. But no matter what's happening around you, just by maintaining whistling in your spirit, you communicate strength and joy even to the people around you. And so you must not let the devil get you to a point where your head is down. Nothing in life is worth that. Jesus Christ says, is, is your body, is life not more important than clothing than these other things? So the fact that you are alive, and like you remember the day armed robbers took that guy, came to church the next day and preached, and nobody even knew that anything happened. The day armed robbers collected my wife's car, hit her face with a gun, broke her skull there and all of that. But I came to church, why? Because I also know that that's just a car, it's nothing. It's nothing. In the grand scheme of things, and I said to myself, what if it wasn't that they hit her with the gun, they shot her with the gun? And so, and that is what you do by right-sizing your problems. By right-sizing your problems and downsizing it. It's not as bad as it looks. It's not as bad as it seems. Amen? Praise the name of the Lord. So it pleases God. It's an expression of faith and it helps the people around you to feed off your faith and confidence. It plays reverse psychology on the devil. Now, ah, this is not how we expected this person to respond. We are done this and we expect him to be crying right now, but he's still praising God. We are done that, we are taking that, and we expect him to stop going to church, but he's still going to church, he's still praying, he's still singing, he's still, he's still blessing the name of the Lord. After a while, the devil will leave you alone. Do you understand that? And so, maintain your whistle. God does not expect us to hang our heads like unbelievers that have no hope. No, nothing in life shall make you hang your head like an unbeliever who has no hope. To whistle while you wait, stay praiseful, stay thankful, stay expectant, stay hopeful, stay trusting, and stay faith-filled. Stay thankful, stay praiseful, stay expectant, stay hopeful, stay, stay trusting. And stay faith filled. Stay faith filled. Because faith will eventually make the things that you trust God for to happen. Amen. Anything other than these ones will not get you the results you desire. You must stay thankful. You must stay praiseful. You must stay expectant. You must stay hopeful. You must stay trusting. And you must stay faith filled. Now, as I get close to rounding up. Let's learn certain things from the prophet Habakkuk. Just certain truths that we can learn from Habakkuk. Number one, dedicate yourself to God while you are waiting. He said, I will stand on my watch. Dedicate, just, just give yourself to God. In times when you wait, just, just stay. Don't be too much in a hurry. Stay with God. That's when you need to hear God more. He said, I will stand on my watch and I will watch to see what he will say to me. That's the time you want to hear God. So, give yourself over to God. Over to praying. Over to hearing from God. Amen? Number two, never lose sight of the big picture. Never lose sight of the big picture. 
he said that, that though this has not happened, though that has not happened, though this has not given birth, though this has not borne fruit, he said, but I will rejoice in the God of my salvation. What was he doing? I have salvation. I'm a candidate of heaven. I've been redeemed by God. I'm loved by God. He said, I will look at that and find joy in that. Look at the big picture. Your life is not just that that child hasn't come or that job hasn't come or that money hasn't come. Your life is bigger than that. I don't know if I've shared this story before. I think around 2008, my wife and I, we had just finished praying in the morning at home. And uh, as we say, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, that you know, I led the prayer. And as I say, in Jesus' name, amen. I just started hearing. <laughs> ah, so I opened my eyes. I said, we just finished praying. What is, is this a spiritual crying or something? And she said, you know, I look around. We don't have this. This has not happened. We don't have that. We don't have this. We've been believing for this. This is not in the house. We don't have money for that and all of that. This was maybe around 2008. And, and you know, and I think it was by the Spirit of God. And I said, no, no, no. We can't think like that. We can't be like that. I said, first of all, look at our street. At that time, we were living in Games Village, uh, the particular, in those early days. I said, look at our street. We are the youngest couple yet. How many of our mates can even afford? It was like a big estate in those days. I said, how many of our colleagues can even afford to live here? I know she did those things because what she was uh, perturbed about, which, they were so, we didn't have those things. So it was a genuine concern she was expressing. But I said, we can be like that. I said, first of all, look at, look at our street. How many people? I said, we have two cars outside. How many of our mates, our colleagues, I think we're like seven years in marriage then, have this? I said, we already had two children. We had two sons then. I said, we have people that we did premarital counseling with that still don't have children. I started counting. I started counting the goodness of God. I started saying, look at this. Look at that. Look at what God has done. Look at this. Look at that. You know, in two days, we got about 250,000 naira then miraculously. I can't begin to go into, the de- into details, but that's one of the most miraculous money gifts that I've ever gotten in my life. Because you must right-size the problem and you must, you must, you must l- look at the big picture. Look at the big picture. What the devil wants you to do is to look at what is not working out well. You must step out, out, of, that, out of that dark ring and look at what is working out. Because so many things are working out well for you. And you must be able to see that. So number three, uh, write the vision down. God said to Habakkuk, write the deep vision down. It's a visual reminder that God will fulfill what he has said. Do you have your expectations written down? Do you have your dreams written down? God said to him, write it down. Number four. Have faith that all things are working together to fit into God's ultimate plan for you. Have faith. He said, the just shall live by faith. After he had told him, tarry, wait for it. He shall not tarry, it shall surely come to pass. He said, the just shall live by faith. And so by faith you will ride on your high places. Because when we saw him later, he said, I will receive strength and I will ride upon high places. Upon high places. So by faith you are confident that the end of the story is not yet. The end will be in your favor. And lastly, in that chapter 3, he said, uh, uh, this is to the chief musician. I believe that everything he wrote, he composed a poem and he sent it to the musician. and said, turn this into music. Let us play it on 10 stringed instruments. Let us, let us make melody unto the Lord. So compose songs while you wait. Compose songs of praise. That's the time that you should be the best Christian ever. You know, I have a, if I thought about this, I would have brought it. I had a little uh, jotter like that. And in my worst times, I had poems that I wrote to God. I had love letters that I wrote to God. And you know what? God answered. It should be the time that you are making melody and music unto the Lord. Amen. Now, I need to finish because uh, time is against me. Now, always find something to sing about. And there is always something to sing about. There is always something to sing about. We must learn to trust God's heart. Even when we can't see his face. See how different people employ different strategies to whistle in the Bible. You look through the Bible, you see different people employ different strategies. Like I said, it's not just the physical whistling. It's anything that you can do that makes the weight less tedious. That that makes the, that, that keeps your spirit high. The Bible says Abraham grew strong in faith by giving praise to God. He did not grow weak in faith, but God he strengthened his faith by giving praise to God. Habakkuk maintained an attitude of irrational joy. Actually, the word joy there in Hebrew, I think it's jeel, G-E-E-L. And what it means is to spin around with intense motion. So he said, I don't have this, I don't have that, this is not working well, but I will spin around and celebrate God in joy. And so, you see, he handled his own, he whistled by dancing and giving God irrational joy. Jesus expressed trust 
and rest. When he slept through a storm, unsure of what will happen next or when the journey will end. For him, it was just resting and sleeping in God. Just resting in God. Like Daniel, he just went to bed and trusted God to, to bring him out. That's, that is contrary to what the enemy expects. They throw you in a lion's den. What you should be doing is, yepa, I'm done. So, something uh, contrary to what the devil expects. For Zechariah, he continued serving God in spite of childlessness. For him, it was service. You see, I may not have child. The Bible says his wife was well advanced in age. And they were very old. And stricken in years. But he kept serving God. And one day, an angel appeared to him and God turned everything around. Uh, Simeon, the man that was waiting for Jesus in the temple, uh, he suspended death just by his expectation. He said, death, when death came knocking, he says, no, I can't go yet. I'm waiting to see the Messiah. Death will come. He said, ah, by now you are 95 years old. He said, I can't die yet. There's something I must see in the land of the living. So by his expectation, which is another thing, and, and the way to express your expectation, say it, sing it, declare, write it down. He, ex- uh, uh, he, 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 he waited or he whistled, sorry, by his expectation in faith. And Job determined to wait till the end. And he sinned not. The Bible says in all of this, Job did not sin. Because in times like that, the temptation to sin, to do the wrong thing, is very high. He says, I will wait till my change comes. Wait till the process is complete. Do not change your confession about God and his promise. Whistle a happy tune. Yes, literally sometimes just whistle. Whistle while you drive. Whistle while you walk. Whistle while you wait. Let the devil know, in case the delay is from the devil, that he can't condition your joy, he can't condition your Christianity by what he fights or what he resists in your life. Let God know that you believe and are confident that what he has promised will surely come to pass. Let God know by your expression of gratitude that what he has promised will surely come to pass. The Bible in closing says, They that wait upon the Lord. They shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and shall not faint. In closing, I will read 2 Chronicles and I want us to open there. 2 Chronicles chapter 20. And let us see how Jehoshaphat faced his battle. He faced his battle by singing and God gave him the victory. So let that encourage somebody. 2 Chronicles chapter 20. Second Chronicles 20. The backdrop to the story. Three cities, three nations have come to attack uh, uh, Jehoshaphat and the people of Israel, the people of Judah. And uh, they didn't have the uh, military might to confront them. In verse 14, I'll be jumping 14 and 15. Then the Spirit of the Lord, so they were seeking the face of the Lord. Uh, and then the Spirit of the Lord came upon Jehaziel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Benaiah, the son of Jael, the son of Mataniah, a Levite of the sons of Asaph. Now, Asaph are musicians in the midst of the assembly. And he said, listen, all you of Judah and you inhabitants of Jerusalem and you King Jehoshaphat, thus says the Lord to you, do not be afraid nor dismayed because of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours, but the Lord's. Tell yourself, the battle is not mine, but the Lord's. Verse 17. It says, you will not need to fight in this battle. Position yourselves. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord who is with you, O Judah and Jerusalem. Do not fear or be dismayed. Tomorrow, go out against them, for the Lord is with you. Verse 20. So they rose early in the morning. Inspire can actually come. So they rose early in the morning and went out into the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went out, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, and you inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe, that's faith, in the Lord your God, and you shall be established. Believe his prophets, and you shall prosper. And when he had consulted with the people, he appointed those who should sing to the Lord, and who should praise the beauty of holiness. And as they went out before the army, and were saying, Praise the Lord, for his mercy endures forever. Now, when they began to sing and to praise, the Lord set ambushes against the people of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, who had come against Judah, and they were defeated. For the people of Ammon and Moab stood up against the inhabitants of Mount Seir to utterly destroy, to utterly kill and destroy them. And when they had made an end of the inhabitants of Seir, they helped to destroy one another. So when Judah came to a place overlooking the wilderness... 
They looked toward the multitude and there were their dead bodies fallen on the earth. No one had escaped. No one had escaped. You know, certain battles in life, you face them by singing. Certain battles in life, you face them by rejoicing. That's not what the devil wants. And so we are playing reverse psychology on the devil tonight. And, and then also commissioning God's angels uh, as we sing, as we bless God, as we celebrate. I don't know what you are confronting. I don't know what is confronting you. Just bless the name of the Lord. Bless the name of the Lord. Let, not, let him know that the weight is not going to steal your song. The weight is not going to steal your joy. That you will joy in the Lord your God.